so uh, I would like to bring out uh, our next guest. Uh, you may know him uh, from the Vlog Brothers, a series of uh, uh, back and forth uh, video messages between him and his brother John. Uh, but you may know him from any number of other uh, shows that he uh, he started and hosts on on YouTube. He's uh, uh, he's got his own own little YouTube empire and. Uh, uh, he also uh, writes and sings funny songs. Uh, would you please welcome Mr. Hank Green? <laughs> there was a mic stand here before. But, I mean, I've got other stuff to do. Before, before I start singing, anyway. Oh, look, there's monitors and everything. Okay. So first, can we bring the house lights up for a sec? I don't know if that's possible. House lights! House lights! There might not be people standing next to that switch. There we go. I'm focusing on you. Can you say good morning to my brother, John? Not right now. <laughs> All together. One, two, three. Good, Good morning, John! <laughs> and, uh, one person. <laughs> um, we do sometimes say the day. John always says the day. I stopped, like, sometime in 2011, and I, I recently <laughs> talked to John about this. And he said, and he was like, what? Like, he felt personally offended. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. Oh, well, no, no, no. yeah. Could you hear me just find them before anyway? Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's just a fantastic theater, but you can hear me better now. So thank you for saying good morning to my, my brother John. I'm going to put this over here now. And this was previously being used by a child. Ooh. Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> that is that moving very slowly. Okay. Oh look, my timer. I have 44 minutes and 56 seconds left. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> so we're on a ship. That's really weird. I don't know, like, if, like, it, it hits me about once every, like, half an hour or so, where I'm like, oh, I'm on a boat. Like, this is, like, I was backstage, and for some reason back there is more like, it's shuddering a little bit, and I'm like, why is this happening to me? <laughs> I don't know, the people who have their, uh, their, their rooms at the back of the boat, I feel like, are, they're, you're kind of constantly shimmying because you're over the engines. I'm in the middle somewhere, so I don't feel that. Um, but it's super weird, and awesome, but mostly super weird. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but first I want to talk about how cool it is that I get to like be here, not just because it's a ship and we're going to the Caribbean, but because I get to play music for you. And <laughs> applaud yourself while I plug myself in. Um, generally when I play a show by myself or with my brother, the audience is much younger and there's nothing, like I have no issue with that, like I, lo I love all of my audience. Um, but there are certain songs that they just don't get, not because they're not smart or they're not like aware of things, but just because they're not 33, you know? <laughs> and so I get to play, like, I'm very excited to get to play those songs on days like today, and instead of being like, I love this song so much, I'm going to play it for you, and everybody would be like, I've never seen that show <laughs> that you're singing about, and me being sad in return, being like, you missed out on the best part of life. <laughs> um, I get to play the song, and you get to appreciate it. This song, uh, the first verse is from the perspective of a young ensign. <laughs> on the day of his first command, uh, in Starfleet. <laughs> 
Stardate 42695.3 was a pretty big day for me. I was given my first command. But it turned out to be more difficult than I planned. So I went to record and said, what if I fail? What if I freeze up with the pork on our tail? What if the choice I make is wrong? Said to me, Wesley, give me a break. It's arrogant to think you'll never make a mistake. But when you're in that position, you only have to ask yourself one question. You ask, what would Captain Picard do? <laughs> what would Captain Picard do? Will he injure the safety of his ship and his crew? And then complete the mission And he'd make himself a better person <laughs> He'd bring peace to the galaxy And he'd do it for free Oh yeah That's what Captain Picard would do I just woke up after three centuries and my first thought was of money. Not that my family was gone. But this small guy in a jumpsuit said to me that they'd abolish currency. Everything I'd worked for was gone. Oh, there was nothing to withdraw. So I said, to him, what do you invest in if you don't have big corporations? He said, we invest in ourselves. <laughs> and maybe I should try that out for myself. Because that's what Captain Picard would do. Yeah, that's what Captain Picard would do. He ensure the safety of his ship and his Federation and earn the Klingon's admiration. Oh yeah, that's what Captain Picard would do. Oh, remember when he told us to remove the saucer section, and even though we were at warp nine, there was no objection. And yeah, we could have killed the Borg using you, but we agreed with the captain. The wrong thing to do And I'd rather follow Dixon Hill Private detective Than observe some outmoded Esoteric prime directive <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I just I, So I was looking up the lyrics to this song Before the cruise Because I forget the words And and I forgot about that lyric Like in the, in the studio version I dropped it I have no idea why I was super excited about that when I found it <laughs> And even after he was tortured for 40 days and nights, he told that Cardassian that there were four lights. There are four lights! Well, yeah, when you're confused, and the choice seems too hard, just think of Captain Picard. It's been a long time since I've played a show and I'm super nervous, but this is really, really fun. <laughs> my, I'm wearing pants that are baggy enough that you can't see my legs kind of shaking. <laughs>